Serious, those of you who have been disowned, what was your side of the story? Ex wife who cheated on me with a close friend from my job during quarantine was stuck at home with my family for months while I was working. Apparently she'd been crying and making up sob stories to convince my family that I had cheated on her. When I found out I'd been cheated on, she told me. I wanted to make the divorce clean and didn't tell my family what happened. Two months later I've moved for work and find out that they're still great friends with her and all believe that I was the cheater. The only blood relative who believes me is my youngest sister. Crap's depressing. I'm so sorry to hear this. It sucks. My 90 plus year old grandma has dementia now. Apparently, she disowned some male person sometime in her life. And now she gets confused about who exactly she disowned. So, there are days when it's me who was disowned. Sometimes it's one of my brothers, or cousins, or uncles. We all just take turns being disowned for a day. It was tough at first but now we all find it pretty amusing and just a natural part of caring for a senior family member. This is very sweet. You're doing good. My mom decided when I was 13-14 that she didn't want to have kids anymore. Her and my dad divorced, so my dad moved out of the family house and my mom was newly single. So she gets my sister out first by asking my sister to go away to stay with our dad for the weekend. When my sister came back, my mom had packed all her items in boxes and said, find somewhere else to live. Sister was maybe 15. Her reasoning is she didn't like the crowd my sister was running with. With me, I stuck around longer. I took more abuse and neglect. My mom didn't cook, or clean, or have food in the house. And despite getting child support, if I asked for shoes, or anything, ask your father, don't ask me. Despite not having food or money, she wouldn't give me the alarm code to the house, or a key. I could only come home if she was home. One day she agreed to drive my friends and I to the movies. Well her and I got into a small argument about something in the morning, I don't remember what, and I left and arrived home in the afternoon. She was home but wouldn't let me in. I was a 13 14 year old kid, before cell phones were that commonplace. Ringing the bell, peering in the windows, she wouldn't let me in. Finally I found an open window and climbed through and she coldly looked at me and said, You know, I could have you arrested for breaking into the house if I wanted to. I went to live with my dad shortly thereafter. She moved away to live with a guy she met from the internet, sponsored him to come into the country with his 12 year old son. By the time I was 16, she was married and moved the guy in, and bought his son new video games, travel allowance, his own apartment when he was a teenager, and wouldn't even buy me shoes. Well, she gave this guy access to her bank account and he took all her money, her entire life savings, all her money in the world. She lost her house and became homeless. My sister took her in at the time. My mom eventually got back on her feet a little bit. Got a job. I tried to repair the relationship and be nice. Never for long. Finally she had some kind of mental breakdown a few years ago when I was in my early 30s. And called my office demanding I help her. Something happened at work where her mental health went sideways and she started behaving very erratically. For some reason when she called my colleague speaking nonsensically and rambling about me. My colleague decided to give her my number. To take it up with me myself. My colleague said she felt bad after. So I tried to help my mom. And spent all this time talking to her boss. Her union rep. Her neighbors. Her doctor. Trying to help her. And she just kept going crazy and being abusive, not willing to accept my help. I washed my hands of her. So she disowned me when she got a better family and then I tried to help her but she tried to take me down with her. Man, I'm really sorry you had to go through all that. Sometimes it's better to get rid of toxic people in your life. It's just a shame that your mom had to be that toxic person. I genuinely hope you're in a better place now. Mum saw that I'd worn some of her clothes while she was in another province for work. I came home to her screaming that I'd sold thousands of dollars of her clothing to my high school friends. We were so poor we had to steal food. Nobody bought any clothes. Nobody stole them either lol. She then said she was going to destroy everything I owned. And in a panic I hid in my room and put the dresser against the door. She started throwing herself against it, and I was terrified to realize she was gonna get in. My lava lamp fell, I caught it, and threw it when she forced the door open. She screamed, 
I jumped out a window and ran barefoot to a friend's house. She called the police accusing me trying to murder her. I turned myself in and told the police that I did assault her and would accept any charges. They released me to my friend's house and told my mom that they'd charge her with child abandonment if she kept pushing. But her ex-best friend drove 4 days to get me. She signed over the ownership papers and I've had an amazing dad ever since. I am so glad you have a somewhat happy ending. The bonds we choose to make and protect are truly stronger than any blood ties. I don't consider myself disowned, but I have been cut off from seeing my younger siblings. I've pretty much disowned certain family members myself. My mother, 50, has been abusing her position of EPOA for my Alzheimer's adult grandmother, 80, via extortion, and unlike everybody else, I choose to hold the bee accountable for her actions. Because her selfish actions led to my nana nearly needing her feet amputated from having lack of medical care and attention. I told everyone what she was doing and nothing happened. No one wants to prosecute her because apparently legal fees are more important than getting my grandmother justice. So, essentially, I was disowned for exposing her extortion. I really hope your nana gets the healthcare she needs. My mom's plan to divorce my dad, take his house, and live off the child support money, evaporated when I turned 13 and started eating like the teenage boy I was. Mom hadn't planned on that much of an outlay, so she wasn't making a dime off my presence any longer. Because she no longer had any use for me, out I went at age 13. Jokes on her, I'm successful now and when my younger brother had to stop giving her her money due to his financial crisis job loss. Guess who called to reconcile? I never returned her call. That is pretty sad your own mother kicked you out and only saw you as a way to take money from your dad I feel really bad for you glad you're doing well now. I was disowned but probably by my own choice. Father died when I was 18. I gave up college to look after him drive him to hospital every other day for tests. He went to hypno sessions I would sit for hours waiting for him. I did it all. My brother was never to be seen he was away living his life. Mother was a heavy drinker. I still lived at home my brother didn't. I was left to put up with drunk abuse from my mum losing her husband of 30 years. I looked the double of my dad so for some reason she took it out on me. All this is what people told me. Changed locks on me after coming home from work all the time and I was stuck. Claimed I was stealing from her. Telling everyone lies about me it was horrible. Nightly abuse shouting at me accusing me of nonsense while drunk. I tried to help but she didn't want to know. Used to call police on me claiming all sorts. They would turn up see my mum being drunk and me in my room chilling and tell her off. Was very toxic. My brother wasn't interested he was 4 years older than me and just didn't care. Never visited me or my mum. I begged for help and he was just a coward. One day a friend had a room come up for rent so I packed stuff and just left. She was shocked and surprised, but it was the best thing. I used to try keep in touch but just got abuse. Drunk and phone calls and threats. I was 21 at this point and was expecting a child with my partner so decided I had had enough. I cut all ties. Cue my brother realizing my mum had lots of money from my dad's retirement and life insurance. Becomes my mum's best friend. She buys him everything. Effectively making a deal with the devil, and is scared to talk to me in case she finds out. Long story short years later turns out my mum had throat cancer he just didn't tell me about until she choked and died suddenly one day. And I get left a voicemail telling me as much. Attended the funeral through gritted teeth. And then found out I was nowhere on the will. And my brother got the lot. A substantial amount. And I never heard from him again to this day it's been 5 years since my mum died and he just vanished. I was told I could fight it but that wasn't me. I was never about the money unlike my brother. And I live hoping he comes knocking one day and needs a kidney so I can tell him to go away kindly. Family and money is a horrible situation. And I live daily thinking I did something wrong and I can't put my finger on what it was to be treated this way and it haunts me and has left me with many issues. The wrong family member died first my dad was a gentleman and looking back put up with horrible abuse from my mum. I was like my dad and my brother was like my mum. I want you to know that it wasn't your fault. I was told by my mother that my general existence causes more problems than it solves, and I had two weeks to either leave or kill myself. She didn't care which I chose to do, but if I killed myself I needed to make it look like an accident or she couldn't collect on my life insurance. 
She decided this needed to happen because I'm disabled. Taking care of my dad who was suffering the after effects of a stroke and early onset dementia. He became frustrated and mean spirited quite easily at times. I was probably disowned at least a dozen times. Oof, that's rough. I'm sorry man. My mom and my aunt are going through this with my grandmother right now. And it's devastating and heartbreaking to watch. I've never gotten a solid explanation since they don't talk to me anymore, but my cousin stopped having anything to do with me as soon as my aunt died. As in literally the day after the funeral, I was very close to my aunt and loved visiting with her, calling her to check in, having her over for dinner, etc. But I always had the distinct impression that my cousins didn't like it for some reason. I didn't understand why since she saw them every week. So it's not like I was taking her away from them or asking her for anything. I never asked my aunt about it since I didn't want to upset her. About a year before she died she told me that I was one of her own. What a shame that her children never felt the same way. Your aunt left inheritance which they don't want you to know. My parents treated some family friends very poorly and had a falling out with that family. A long series of accusations followed where my parents falsified information about this family and slandered their name constantly accusing them of things I personally knew to not be true because I was physically present at the time. I always tried to avoid the topic and stay out of it, but one day my mother essentially cornered me and demanded to know how I felt. I was blunt and honest with her that I didn't agree with what they were doing and that I thought they were mistreating this family and they were not in the right. My mom lost her crap and called me a traitor to the family for not siding with them my family. I told her my feelings were about truth and honesty, not loyalty. She kicked me out of the house right then and there and told me not to come back. I received a letter signed by both my parents later on. In the letter they called me a disappointment and a failure and disowned me, saying I wasn't welcome to be part of the family until I apologized for my egregious behavior. The real tragedy of this is that it happened while my wife was pregnant with our first child, which would be their first grandchild. It has now been almost 3 years and I have never heard from them and they have never met their only granddaughter. I'd call this a win for your child. My father was a toxic narcissist bastard who stole all our family's money, then used the fact that we wanted nothing to do with him as a legal basis to claim estrangement and cut us out of his will. There is no other side. My dad. It was mostly my decision because we used to do hard drugs when I was a kid. Growing up I thought it was normal until friends found out and told me they were worried about me. I first overdosed when I was 14 from drugs he gave me and let me just say it was all downhill from there. I'm 13 years sober now but I kicked him out of my life around the same time. My dad still says horrible things about me and his whole family believes him. So I cut them all out. It's definitely for the better as I have created my own family with supportive friends. Screw that mess. Whoa. So where to begin? My family is very traditional even for our culture's standards. I grew up thinking that my family was Americanized and that the women in my family were shattering the glass ceiling and things couldn't get any better because we were allowed to wear pants, were required to finish high school, allowed to go to college if we had the money ourselves, and we weren't sold off for marriage. My generation even grew up being called and thinking of ourselves as liberated because we had options beyond being housewives. Even though I saw all these things as amazing freedoms thanks to living an American life I still wanted more. I wanted to be able to leave the house on my own. I wanted to hang out with friends. I wanted to question things. I wanted to move away, live and work wherever I wanted. And I wanted privacy, even if it was just a lock on a door. So I was a difficult child as my family put it. And that turned into being a rebellious teen especially when I started seeing a lot of the other freedoms other girls at my school had. When I turned 18 I was kicked out and by 19 I had met my husband and my family didn't approve. They eventually told me that I can either be allowed back into the family or I can be with him and get disowned. So I chose him and ended up moving across the country without anyone knowing. I didn't hear from my family, except my grandma. For about 2 years, then a family friend I kept in touch with ended up telling my family that my life was going really well. My mom started to contact me when she heard, but it took over 6 years for the rest of my family to even acknowledge that I was even alive. 
It wasn't until my husband and I hit our 9 year anniversary and my family saw what my husband's competition was. Then they started to treat us like people and want to start talking to us and building relations with us. I keep in touch with a few of my family members but I keep them at arm's length. I gave up the possibility of any meaningful family bonds a long time ago and the communication now is mostly surface level cordialness. I went to court to get disowned. My father was over 5, 000, 000, 000, 000 euros in debt. I had to go to court because if I just reject the heritage it would pass on to my children and they would have to make the same decision when they turn 18. I didn't want to be abused anymore. Technically I left my father, but he really abandoned me when he married my stepmom. Stepmoms aren't always bad. She was just specifically abusive. Step parents can really be a hit or miss. My stepmother was the sweetest woman ever. She treated me way better than my father, even giving him crap when he even tried to be mean to me. But then you have my stepfather whose textbook definition of what a stepfather, or an adult, should not be around a kid. Extra points for being creepy after I hit puberty. Sorry for my English. It's not my first language. My father, with whom we live in the same city, left my mother and me when I was not even 2 years old. He cheated on my mom and although she persuaded him to stay, she loved him very much. He left. Everything was fine until my prom. In my country, Ukraine, we have a tradition. Girls dance the first dance with their dads, and the boys dance with their mothers. I invited my mother to dance, because I don't consider my father a parent. After that, he took offense at me and tells all relatives from his side that I am a bee and do not deserve a place in theirs and his life. They love me, because I am the first child in the family and have not done much harm to anyone, but they also love him, which causes strange feelings in me. We had a court session because he stopped paying ailments. After this hearing, through our lawyer, he told us that he was unpleasant, that my mother was turning me against him. P.S. He blocked all my and my mother's numbers, and we only communicate through a lawyer. Who else is turning me against him? I'm so freaking hate him. BTW, your English was near perfect. Mother wanted me to never really fully leave the nest. Like, you can move out, but don't be further than 30 minutes away and spend as much of your time at my place as possible for whatever help I need with the office, the house, or just to be my person, son, best friend, confidant, sounding board, whatever I need. Do this from now until I die, whenever that is. My mother and I are also black. And my mother, textbook example of how racism is a two-way street that she is, would only truly accept a black woman as my wife and mother of my kids, if she had to share me at all. That is, obviously she'd prefer not to. This way, she could have a fully intact black family unit to belong to, and she could put all of us to work at her law office as well. Also, she assumed we'd graciously let her move in with us when she's too old to take care of herself. All of this is how real black families act, BTW, because something something family is all we got. I, realizing the trap, immigrated to Europe, something I'd talked about for years. This was never supposed to happen, because the only way he's going to Europe is if I buy his ticket, and I'm never buying his ticket, so that's that. I was supposed to one day wake up or let it go or what have you and take my rightful place with the family, just kinda do the noble thing and surrender my entire future in the name of being the best son I could be. I was financially dependent on her at the time, but I had a friend living in Germany who'd immigrated from Chelyabinsk, Russia a few years prior. She bought me my plane ticket, and I'd squirreled enough money away from my passport. So not only did I loophole my way out of servitude, the fact that a white woman helped me do it burned her butt even worse. Last thing I heard from my mother was have fun with your white bee. Don't ask me for money ever again. I flew to Europe on the 3rd of December, 2014. I was a Jehovah's Witness, and I started asking the wrong questions. There is now several hundred people that watched me grow up. The only social circle I was allowed to have, that must pretend I don't exist if they ever see me. There are a lot of people trapped in a web of lies. They can simply walk out and be free but they are too dumb or scared. Either way it still hurts to lose family to religion. These people are alive and capable of choosing family first yet they don't. Very sad. 
I won't go into much but I was adopted by a rich family and then left on the streets at 15 because I didn't fit into the family image. You are wanted. Don't be sad it wasn't by them. I doubt they had any real value to bring to your life. My mother and I slowly stopped talking after I moved out. She wasn't the best parent and she did a lot of mean things sometimes. I sent her an email. She lives in New Zealand. I live in Australia. She told me not to contact her again please. I don't know what I did wrong. I don't know if I'm supposed to miss her. This is so pure. I'm sorry you're going through this. Yes, she's your mother. However terrible, and you're naturally predisposed to miss her. It doesn't make you a bad person if you don't based on what she did either. Feel the feelings. Let them go. Move forward. Sending hugs. My dad had mental health issues and believed he was Jesus Christ. I was disowned for refusing to call him God. This happened a few times. He'd always call me 6 months later wondering why I hadn't been in touch. Yike. My mother was Catholic and my father was Muslim. I attended Catholic school all the way to junior high. I would go to church with mom on Sundays and mosque with dad during the week. They fought constantly over what religion I would be. When I was 15 my father came home and announced he'd found my husband and I would be going to Istanbul to marry him when I turned 16. I emancipated and my father disowned me. He only spoke to me one other time before he died. Just turned 51 and to this day have zero regrets about my decision. My narcissistic birth mother has disowned me several times either for no reason or because of whatever man she's with at the time she disowned me out of the blue this time because her new husband she met on the internet wanted me gone she disowned. Both of my sons at the same time I was blindsided with no warning or signs beforehand I'm not forgiving her this time. Sounds like we have the same mother. I can't tell whether or not I've been disowned nor do I care, but I personally have long ago disowned my relatives. They are manipulative, racist, abusive and overall bigoted. To make a long story short, if they were to disown me it's because I'm the exact opposite of them. Hey, I hope life is going well for you, and frick off to all those racist bastards. Where do I start? My mother and I have never gotten along. As a child she has been overly critical of me. Asian parent. Even when I was small I remember her telling my dad if she can't even cut in a straight line what can she even do. I was 5 when she said that. When she realized that I was not going to grow up like she did or have the interests she wanted me to have she grew more critical of me. She laid off a bit when my little sister came around and she favored her more. I always felt like I was never enough in her eyes. She only was affectionate during family get togethers, vacations or sometimes in public. When I came out of the closet, she didn't believe me. She always said lightheartedly that she would love me no matter what but when push came to shove my Venus was just a phase. We then went to church for the next few months afterwards. I was Catholic. When I hit depression in my teens each time she picked me up from therapy she always kept asking when am I going to be okay or hinting how much my sessions are while on antidepressants. She then cheated on my dad when I was around 18. When I had my son. She came to be supportive after the birth but ended up criticizing how dirty my place was. My parenting and subtly hinted at calling CPS. Postpartum hit hard and a failed suicide attempt ensued. What broke the camel's back was I was visiting family and her mother's partner kept on making me uncomfortable. Kept trying to don my child with a certain political hat and took video of her saying political stuff I was not okay with. Kept saying I was uncomfortable but was told you need to take the stick out of your butt or you need to learn to take a joke. The behavior still continued. Then a big confrontation happened and she denied everything of my childhood. My mother said she can't control her partner. He does what he wants despite us telling her it's not okay. She then stated and begged for me to get help. I mentally broke. I'm in therapy now but right now I don't know if I can take it if something like this happens again. I am just thankful for my support system now. I'm probably missing some stuff but at this moment I'm thankful for who I have in my life and that I'm alive. I was like you too. Hello fellow Asian person hope things go better for you. My dad and I were talking about the then brand new Iraq war, spring 2003, and that went alright until discussion turned to the Vietnam war. I didn't and don't support a draft, 
and I don't remember what exactly I said because I was 14 then, but it was something to the effect of I understand why some people around here dodge to Canada. He got super p and said he disowned me, and he'd disown me if I ever dodged a draft. He said he was just slightly too young to have gone to Vietnam but he would gladly serve like his dad did in Korea. He was never in the military or any adjacent field, and neither were my mom or brother or any extended family except the two grandpas. I never was when I got older. The weirdest thing is that he has no recollection of that at all. Everything was normal, crappy but normal. The next day, it was one of the first big things that made me stop loving him. The others being him slapping my mom and later him threatening me with a knife. But we are at least friendly with each other. Him I think from genuine affection and me from duty. This is a tough one and not something I talk about in RL. My mom was very abusive. Extremely. Mentally. Physically. I tried to run away when I was 9. Taken back home and wasn't believed. My mom opened a charity shop and a children's home. She also beat and starved the children. When I was a teen I ran away and was dragged back and locked in the house after I got away for a few days. Finally the last beating was so bad. I believed she was going to kill me. She had already said how she was going to get away with it. I managed to fight and get away. My school and friends believed me because they had seen the marks from my beatings. How I ate friends food or the trash etc. I carried on with school. Lived in a commune and I think my mom gave up when she realized I wasn't going to be her punching bag anymore. A few months later, my mom contacted me. One of the kids in her care had died after she beat him to death. She wanted me to tell the cops that I had lied about my mom beating me. I agreed to lie for her but instead I worked with the cops and social workers and a few months later, all the kids currently in her care were removed and my mom skipped the country to avoid arrest as they wanted to charge her for manslaughter as well. My family disowned me over it. They have tried now and then to make contact, but on the condition that I forget about the abuse and pretend we were all a loving family. I refused so they told anyone who would listen that I was satanic. My mom was framed etc. My sister turned out just like my mom and her daughter also ran away and is safe now. The rest of my family just ignores me, even the ones who weren't around for the abuse. I don't tell anyone about my past. My mom made the local paper. Child welfare failed us. My sister was taken into care when I was born. She was sent back. I ran away with my twin when I was 9 sent back. Badly investigated. My school phone child welfare as a teen and they said I must just wait it out since I was close to the legal age of leaving. Ran away when I was 16 and then again when I was 17. Lived on the streets when I was 16 and forced back. My mom was a great manipulator and told people I was a liar. Attention seeking. Mentally unwell. Also strangers and volunteers part of the charity also called child welfare who called my mom and said people were complaining about the kids looking cold and hungry. So she just put up a bigger wall and moved them to the back. My biological father is an abusive alcoholic, but also super Christian, and super redneck conservative. He gave up his rights when I was 4, which my mom always told me was for the best. After I found out I was pregnant, he added me on social media and saw where I had shared some posts with pro-choice views. I guess it bothered him because he blocked me lol. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.